Hey guys, it's Rogway here, and uh, today we are looking at custom actions in Photoshop. How to create your own and how to use ones that are already created. Um, and what is an action? Well, an action is a way that you can perform um, a certain look or a certain technique to your photos without having to do the steps over and over again. Um, or perhaps there's a photographer or a designer that you really um, admire and they've released a action so that you can get a similar result with your own work. And I'm going to show you what I mean. So uh, in the uh, tutorial folder we got quite a bit, um, although it's not a very intense tutorial actually, it's pretty easy. So we're going to start with the random photos folder, we're going to open up one called Underexposed and open that with Photoshop. And here's a common example of where if you've got really strong backlighting, you end up with a silhouetted uh, subject, somebody who's very dark, uh, underexposed. And this is a pretty common problem. We could go and tweak it with brightness and contrast and shadows and highlights, but um, we could also just get an action that does it for us. Um, I want to just mention very quickly here that these photos, I take no credit for the photos used here. These were found on Google and uh, they're for educational purposes only. All right, um, all of the actions that I'm using were created by other individuals. I'm only showing them um, because they were free and uh, really, really excellent. Um, okay, so using this photo here, underexposed, what we're going to do is we're going to load up the action window. We're going to go to Windows, we're going to go to Actions, and you'll see that there's a bunch that are already here for us. Uh, some of these that I'm going to load are probably already here because I use them all the time. I'm going to go to the top right of this window. I'm going to click this little pull down. I'm going to say load actions. For this photo, we're going to look for one that would correct this underexposure. And one quick thing to mention in photography is if you have underexposure, most times you can restore the detail that was there or at least get some detail back. If it's overexposed, that detail is gone forever and you're not going to be able to get that back. So I'm just going to go to the folder, I'm going to go to Rogaway's Favorites. These are ones that I use quite a bit. And the one that I'm using here is Katrin Eisman Fill Flash. We're going to hit Open. And when you do that, you'll notice that it becomes added to your list of actions. And you get a little folder. So what you have to do is click the little arrow next to the folder and you'll see that inside there is the same named file. We're going to click that. This is the action itself. This is just the folder that contains it. We're going to click the play button on the bottom. And it's going to say, uh, it's going to basically explain what it's doing. We're going to hit continue. And look at that. Look at that difference between our original and our fixed up one. And like I said, very quickly, within a couple seconds, it's done a series of steps and we didn't have to do anything. We just sat back and watched it and let it do its thing. And most times it does a really great result. So I'm going to just save that to the desktop as fill flash. All right. Oh, and also in this one, as with most, we have a layer that it created called adjust opacity and we can increase or decrease the amount of a result that we got on that action. All right, we're going to close this off. We already saved it. We're going to say don't save and close under exposed as well. Next, we're going to go to midnight. And for this one, we're going for a certain effect. And so here's the photo, which is already an excellent photo. Uh, we're going to go to the load actions once again. We're going to go load action. And this time we're going to go to Rogway's favorites. We're going to load up Dave's Midnight Sepia. We're going to go open. And in this case, I already had it loaded, so it's up here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to click the little arrow and I'm going to run or play the Midnight Sepia effect. And you can see what kind of an effect that had on that photo. Now in this case, it's way too strong. The effect is, is uh, too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to press Command A 
to select our entire window and we're going to go edit and copy or command C and you'll notice most actions will make a separate tab so we're going to go back to our original tab we're going to press command A and we're going to press command V or we're going to go edit paste and that'll paste that midnight sepia effect over the original picture now what we can do is we can adjust the opacity of that layer to give it that midnight sepia look but we don't want it to be super super strong so you can see that it kind of gives it that cool look so we're going to save this one save it as midnight and save there we go i'm going to close both of these now next we're going to open up the one called uh, Fivel's Glow. Now this is a really nice one. I think anyways, I use it for wedding photography all the time. Press Command Zero. Got this photo and let's say we want to make it look more dreamy like, more kind of a glowing like. Uh, we're going to go to Actions again. We're going to go to Load Actions and we're going to go Rogways Favorites. We're going to choose Fivel's Gothic Glow and I'm going to hit Open. Now this one was already loaded as well. In this case, when you pull it down, you have different types of actions. Now in this case, usually general interest glow is good enough, but you also have, a, uh, I think it's choice of interest glow as well. I'm going to just choose use the general interest glow. I'm going to hit play. And you'll notice that the glow effect that it adds is way too much, unless you like it really, really glowing like that. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to press Command A. Command C, I'm going to go back to my other tab, I'm going to press Command A and I'm going to press Command V so that the glow gets added to this image as you can see. And now I'm going to just pull down the opacity to a level that I like. You know, maybe around there. Alright, so that adds a really nice touch to the photos. Again, I, it's really great for, uh, for wedding photography. I use that one quite a bit. So save that one let's call it gothic glow or just glow whatever and we're going to close those two all right there's also um, actions that are for skin fixing as well so we're going to open up the one called skin fix and you know she doesn't need her skin fixed Pretty sure this is, um, yeah, the girl from Game of Thrones. But uh, yeah, she doesn't need her skin fixed, but I'm going to show you how this one works. We're going to go to Load Actions and Rogaway's Favorites, and I'm going to choose Chew Soft Version 2. I think that's the one that I was using. Uh, there's also Can't See Skin Fix. We'll see what the difference is. We're going to use Chew Soft. And you'll notice, yeah, you know what? Mm, I don't like that one as much. We're going to go to load again. We're going to choose can't see skin fix instead. It's easier. So we got basic skin fix. We got paint soft skin. We got can't see skin fix. And just choose the can't see skin fix. We're going to hit play. And it's going to say, um, yeah, let's go on. Let's continue. Most times you're just going to click through these. Okay, and here's what it did is it made the skin very, very soft. If we look at the before and the after, and now what it's asking me to do is to paint on this layer, on this uh, layer mask, to bring back detail in the parts that should be sharp, like her eyes. So I'm going to go with my paintbrush and set it to black, and I'm on the layer mask, and I'm just going to paint back the detail in those important areas like the mouth and the eyes maybe the tip of the nose too so in this case if I turn it off and turn it on you can see how it softened the skin and the rest of the face but I'm allowed to control which areas stay in focus and which ones don't so that's kinda nice so save that I'm gonna save it as the skin fix 
There's one more I want to show you guys that I find useful. And that is, I'll open up the one called Instagram. I think I've shown this one before in other tutorials, but let's look at it again. So here's our starting image. We're going to go to Actions, and we're going to go to Load Actions. This time, from Rogway's Favorites, we're going to use the Instagram Actions by DBox. And I'm going to hit Open. And this is a really excellent one, especially if you use Instagram. Um, what it allows you to do is it gives you all of the Instagram actions that you would have um, using Instagram now inside Photoshop. So the nice thing is you don't have to be constrained to square photos only like Instagram forces you to. Um, and each of these give you the same sort of an effect. So uh, let's say I want the Nashville effect and I hit play. All right, there it is. Very quick, very easily. I get that effect added. Brannon, okay, same deal. Actually, this one might have been Brannon uh, by the previous photographer because it looks like it's been edited. Early bird, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, all of the effects that you would have with um, Instagram are included in this one. So it's really handy, really excellent. Um, if you're the type of person who likes those Instagram looking photos, which a lot of people do, I don't necessarily agree with it, but if you're going for that effect, um, there they are, very quick and easy. Now they're part of my actions and I can add them to any of my photos anytime I want. All right, nice, easy, quick. So let me just add one to this so that I can save it. Uh, I like Nashville on this one, I don't know. Whatever, it doesn't matter. And I'm going to save it as Instagram. Oops, I screwed up. Save it as Instagram. There we go. Okay, so those are uh, some popular ones. Again, um, I want to mention that there are thousands of them out there. If I go to my browser and I type in Photoshop Actions, People are creating these all the time. It's so like here, for example, a 100 free Photoshop actions. Uh, you go into this site, for example, and it says how to make your own as well. And if I scroll down, here's all these different actions. And if I like the look of the, uh, you know, particular, you know, photo that they're showing me, and I want to get that same effect, well, I would download the action, I would run it in Photoshop, and away I go, I end up with that same sort of effect on my photo. It doesn't always work out perfectly because sometimes the photos don't work compared to the ones that are used in the examples, but whatever. Um, it's experimenting and trying and seeing which ones are your favorites. All right, so that's cool. One other thing I did here is um, I created uh, a PDF of, um, I can't remember how many actions that I downloaded and I just made 